Now we will move on to the second example. In the second example, we are interested in solving a truss problem. What we want is we want to design the truss so that it will take the load P, there is R we the members of the truss are fixed, you want to find what is the maximum load P that can be applied so that the members do not fail and there is a restriction on displacement of this point C. The restriction is I want the C to be displaced by less than 0.15 mm. Okay. I want the C to be displaced by less than 0.15 mm and I want to find what is the maximum load that can be applied so that this serviceability condition on displacement of C as well as the strength requirements of the members A, B, B, C and A, C are met. Okay. Now we will solve for the member forces first, find which of these member forces is in tension, which of these member members are in compression, then we have to limit the compressive stress so that it does not exceed the all the critical load for this member okay. and then it should also ensure that the material strength is not exceeded in compression okay. and then in tension also the material strength should not exceed for the given load. Okay. So, let us go about systematically solving this problem, first task is to find the member forces. So, I will use method of joints to find the member forces, first I look at joint uh, B. I am looking at joint B, wherein there are two members coming at the joint. I assume the tensile force acting on this members as positive. So, this will be F B A and this will be F B C okay. and I have a load P acting vertically downward, P by 2 acting like that. Let me assume a coordinate system to be X and y like that oriented like that. Okay. Now, I want to write the equilibrium of forces, I want to write the horizontal equilibrium of forces F x equal to 0 assuming the force acting in this direction as positive. Okay. So, uh, this angle would be theta from the figure and this angle also would be theta. Okay. So, horizontal force for member A B would be acting opposite to the positive direction of x, assume positive direction of the force. So, it will be minus F B A into cos theta plus F B C into cos theta okay, into cos theta plus P by 2 must be equal to 0, this is the horizontal force equilibrium statement. Similarly, I have a vertical force equilibrium, I am assuming the upward acting force as positive equal to 0. Here all the forces are acting in the negative y direction, so all will be negative. So, I will have minus F B A sin theta plus F B C sin theta plus P must be equal to 0. Okay. For this cos theta is for this cos theta would be 3 by 5 and sin theta would be 4 by 5 okay, where 0.5 is this length of the hypotenuse this length would be 0.5 from Pythagoras theorem you can get that okay. so that will be 0.5 and hence cos theta is 3 by 5 and sin theta is 4 by 5. Okay. So, substituting that in here and solving for F A B and F B C, what we will get is we will get F B A to be minus 5 P by 24 and F B C would be minus 25 P by 24. Okay. What does the negative sign indicate? It indicates that member A, B and B C are in compression. Okay. So, that is what it indicates. Okay. Similarly, let me solve for the member force A C by looking at joint C. I am going to look at joint C now. Okay. In joint C, I have F B C again I am assuming tensile forces are positive F A C. I will have a reaction force 
V B there okay, or V C there allow reaction force V C there. Okay. Now, I will write the horizontal force equilibrium first F x equal to 0 writing the horizontal force equilibrium this angle is theta. Okay. So, what I have is I have F A C with a negative sign minus F B C cos theta must be equal to 0. Okay. This implies F A C is 25 P by 24 to cos theta is 3 by 5. So, that will be 5 P by 8 okay. and then I can find V C by writing the vertical force equilibrium which is not necessary in this problem. So, I will not do that. Okay. So, what is the maximum what are the member forces? Member forces are minus twenty five P by twenty four, minus five P by twenty four and five P by eight. So, what is the maximum compressive stress, compressive force? maximum compressive force is minus 25 P by 24 okay. in member B C. Okay. Now, what is the allowable compressive force allowable compressive force would be minimum of where all a buckling load it is a pin pinned Truss is a pin pin structure, so it will be pi square E i divided by L square and the material strength which is sigma y the yield stress value in uniaxial extension, uniaxial this thing multiplied by area of the cross section. Okay. For our case, it is a it is given as in our case, it is given as a circular section, it is a circular section of diameter 15 mm made of material with length small as 200 and unitial yield stress of 250 MPa. Okay. 250 MPa. So, this will be a minimum of pi square 200 into 10 power 3 MPa for E into pi into d power 4 divided by 64 for i okay, divided by L square, L square for member uh, uh, for member B C we found that it is of length 0.5 meters, we found that the member B C is of length same as member A B which is 0.5 meters. Okay. So, that will be at use in uh, millimeters. So, that will be 500 old cube old square ok ok comma sigma y is 250 into pi into d square by 4. I have to find the minimum of these two minimum of these two which is nothing but if I evaluate it, it will be minimum of 19.6 and 44.1, which is 19.6 kilo newtons. This is in kilo newtons, okay. 19.6 kilo newtons. So, what should I do? I will limit this 25 p by 24 to be. 19.6 kilo newtons, which will imply that P should be less than or equal to that. So, P should be lesser than or equal to 18.8 kilo newton, 18.8 kilo newtons. Okay. 
Now, I know uh, the maximum tensile forces forces in member A C which is phi P by A 8 and allowable tensile force would be sigma y to area of cross section which will be 44.1 kilo newtons. This will imply that P should be less than or equal to 8 into 44.1 divided by 5 which will be 70.6 kilo newtons. Clearly, this is not the governing case, 18.8 kilo newtons is the governing case, but you have one more restriction that the deflection at C must be less than 0.15. Now, to find the deflection of C, to find the deflection of this point, this member is a horizontal member. So, whatever this member elongates will be the displacement of the point C. So, you are interested in finding the elongation of member A C. Okay. So, what is the elongation of member A C given a force? We saw that in in a previous lecture when we did axial members. So, delta A C would be the stress in the member A C divided by area of A C okay, into divided by the Young's modulus of A C would give me the strain in that member into the length of A C will give me how much the member has elongated. So, this has to be less than or equal to 0.15 mm. Okay. I know F A C is phi P by 8, I know area of A C is pi 15 square by 4, okay. length of A C is 600 mm, okay. because it was 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3 it is 600 mm divided by n small s which is 200 into 10 power. 3 MPA. Okay, I am using all the units in millimeters, so I have to use MPA for the Young's modulus. This has to be less than or equal to 0.15 mm. Okay. So, this will tell us that this will give us that P has to be less than or equal to 14.1 kilo newtons. Okay. So, give us P as to be lesser than 14.1 kilo newtons. So, combining all the three cases, what we have P must be less than or equal to 14.1 to satisfy serviceability or, or the requirement that the dis displacement of C has to be lesser than a particular value and it has to be less than or equal to 18.8 kilo newtons to satisfy strength requirements. Okay. Hence, the allowable value of P allowable which is what we are interested in finding is 14.1 kilo newtons. Okay. So, this structure will fail by serviceability requirements if it is going to fail rather than by strength requirements. Okay. This is the P allowable. Okay. So, what you have seen in this lecture is two problems one a uh, three dimensional stress analysis problem and one a simple one dimensional stress analysis problem and we saw how to find what is the maximum load that can be applied and maximum stress that can be applied on the structure to satisfy strength requirements as well as serviceability requirements as well as the stability requirements. Okay. So, I hope this gives you a overall feel of what you will be doing in your design courses in the future semesters that you will be taking. Okay. To summarize in this course what we have seen is four concepts force, displacement, stress and strain and you have seen four concepts which relates these four, con four equations that relates these four concepts basically your sustained relationship 
you are called constitutive relation, your force stress relationship which is given by the equilibrium equations, your strain displacement relationship and comparability condition ok. And then you solve some simple bound value problems like an axial member, a beam bending problem, a inflation of a pressure vessel and torsion problem to estimate the stresses and then we saw failure theories basically we saw Tresca criteria, Von Mises criteria for ductile failure or pressure hydrostatic pressure independent failure ok and we saw Rankine criteria and Mohr Coulomb criteria for hydrostatic pressure dependent or brittle failures and we saw how to limit the maximum stresses or the maximum displacements to ensure the safety of the structure ok. Thank you.